So now we are going to be demonstrating some podiatry uh, uh, treatments like treatment of warts and treatment of onychomycosis. Uh, the treatment of pain which we demonstrated is also apl applicable in case of plantar uh, fasciitis where deep tissue heating is going to alleviate and increase, improve, improve the pain. So this is a third application uh, uh, podiatric uh, practitioners can use this device for the plantar fasciitis, uh, plantar warts, and also the onychomycosis. So regarding the warts, we're using the NDAG. The NDAG is known to be absorbed by oxyhemoglobin and by water. So depending on the absorption characteristics, when we are able to use the NDAG, we are able to photocoagulate the tissue and damage the virus and also block the vessels nourishing the wart by uh, specifically targeting the vessels which are uh, supplying the wart. So this is the mechanism of action. And when we are using the NDAG, we are also having the advantage of the deeper penetration of the NDAG. And the fact that plantar warts, we are not worried of scarring and the fact that the NDA is not, not associated with any wound, so we don't have all the risk with other modalities like the electrocautery or the cryocautery. When we are treating a weight-dependent region, the healing is becoming very poor. So if we have a wound, like with the cautery or with the cryo, the healing takes sometimes very long time to happen, whereas with the NDA, where we don't have any wound actually, so we don't have risk of delayed or uh, any contamination of the wound. We are going to be going to the machine interface now because we have options on the presets which are really very nice to follow and to use. So we are going to use the NDAG and for the NDAG we have an application which is the podiatry. And then with the podiatry, we go to the options and we'll see that we have two options here, onychomycosis and warts. We select the warts. And here it gave us some suggestions of using four millimeter spot with the R33 handpiece, 20 millisecond and 120 joules. And then we need to stack the pulses, maybe two, three, four, five, till we see photocoagulation. In order to be more effective, it is really advisable to use keratolytic agent, which is maybe pre, uh, something which is a preparation uh, existing in the pharmacies, which contains salicylic acid, or this can be compounded where we can have 20% salicylic acid ointment, where we apply it at night every day, and then the patient debride the area treated last night uh, in the morning, and then keep doing that for two weeks so that we are getting rid of the hyperkeratosis and the skin becomes thinner so that the penetration of the laser will be much better and it's going to be more, more effective. This is an option. Another option where podiatrics uh, are, are doing it, where they can do the debridement using the scalpel just before the laser uh, session, where they can remove all the keratotic, hyperkeratotic and dead skin layers so that the wart is more exposed for the laser pulses. So this is what we need to do in order to ensure that the treatment is effective. Usually we tell the patient we need anything between one to three sessions, and this will depend on how many words they have and for how long they had it. If the words are less than four in number and the duration is less than six months, usually one session will be enough. However, if we have more than four words and it has been there for more than six months, usually this is a case where we need to do uh, three sessions and sometimes even more. We do the sessions with three weeks interval and uh, as I said, we expect that the area is going to be shrinking, the words uh, is going to be smaller and smaller and sometimes it's, go it's going to disappear even from one session. So those are the presets and this is what we need to do and we are going to start the treatment in a few seconds. Are you okay? Uh, this treatment is uh, quite uh, painful. So sometimes we, we need to infiltrate anesthesia around the ward so that the patient is feeling nothing. 
uh, and sometimes we can do the treatment even with topical anesthesia which is I think less uh, effective because the penetration depth is going to be higher than the efficacy uh, layer of uh, the anesthesia. So we are using the four millimeter spot in this case and we have to apply the pulses on the wart with good cooling so I increase the cold air cooling and we expect to keep doing the laser till we get grayish coloration. So we have to fire the laser till we see grayish coloration and we can see that even with one pulse the grayish coloration was achieved. So I just do another pulse just in case to make sure that we are, uh, we are effective. So we do another pulse. And that's it. And we can see very clearly that the area treated becomes gray. And this is a sign of efficacy. And this is a very good endpoint we expect and we would like to see. So this is the word treatment. And as we can see, it didn't take more than a few seconds. And um, uh, the treatment usually is going to be very effective because it's only one word and it hasn't been there for a long time. So we expect that this is going to be uh, one and single session. So the, the second treatment I would like to demonstrate today is the onychomycosis. Onychomycosis is a problem where topical treatments um, are not very effective because they cannot penetrate the nail. And systemic treatments are having their issues because number one, they need to be taken for a long time, up to six months, and they have hepatotoxic effect. So we have side effects from those medications and because of the prolonged period, the patient need to use, most of the patients are not uh, finding it easy to be compliant and to use it for that long time. So that's why the treatment efficacy is sometimes questionable. Uh, when we are using the NDAG laser, which can penetrate deep, it can uh, overcome the nail and uh, heat the tissue of the nail bed. And this temperature rise is going to kill the fungus. So it's a very, uh, intelligent and very nice way of treating the uh, nail fungus and it has been tried in several uh, publications and it's proven to be very effective. What we need to do is to set the uh, parameters in the right uh, ones. So we are using 30 millisecond pulse duration, 40, millise 40 joule per centimeter square. We are using the four or the six millimeter spot. The six is going to be deeper in penetration but more painful the four is going to be more tolerable and uh, if the lesions are not if the nail is not very thickened then the four is going to do a good job and this is what i'm going to be using today uh, we do three passes on each nail affected nail and we do four sessions once a week so this is the protocol and usually we have to let the patient know that because the rate of nail growth is slow it takes, uh, it, uh, usually it grows one to 1.8 millimeter per month. So we need to give time for the nail, the clear nail to grow out. So this is something the patient has to expect that the treatment, although it's going to be effective from the first session, but in order to show and demonstrate the efficacy, we need some time for the clear nail to grow out. So this is something which has to be discussed with the patient. Uh, it is really very important to know that if the patient is having diabetes, this is a very important predisposition for the fungal infections of the nails. So the control of the diabetes is very important part of the treatment in order to ensure that we don't get reinfection of the nail after the successful treatment. So again, those things need to be discussed with the patient before we start the treatment. Regarding the settings for the nail, Again, we go for the NDAG and for the podiatry. And then we, we go for the options and we select onychomycosis. So for onychomycosis, again, we are using the four millimeter spot. We use 35 to 40 joules and 35 to 40 milliseconds. So it's very easy and we use one Hertz. So those are the settings as we can see. We are going to do three passes on each nail and then 
we expect to conduct four sessions on weekly interval. This is the protocol and this is what we'd like to do. Um, I'll try to uh, do the treatment without cooling first. And if it was too painful, then I'm going to use very mild level of cooling, number one or number two, so that I'm not decreasing the efficacy of the treatment. Sometimes squeezing the toe is going to help with the pain. So we try to treat all the nail from the periphery. Usually the first pass is tolerable, but when we start the second pass, it's going to be a little bit more. But still, we can see that the patient is tolerating the pulses in a nice way. So this is the first pass. Now we start the second pass. We start from out and we go in. Now it's starting to be a little bit more painful. So I'll squeeze a little bit more. And this is almost done with the second pass. And at this point, I can start to use the cooling. So I'll use the cooling now because it's starting to be a little bit painful. And this is going to be the third pass. With the cooling, it's going to be more tolerable. So the third pass is almost done. And we can see that uh, this is the treatment for uh, one, uh, two nail, and this is uh, how we do. If the other nails are not affected, then the treatment is going to be confined to one nail. If we have other affection, then we can go in and continue with the other uh, tools as well.